AC7 Bangor. This is ABC7 News at Noon. One of the state's largest health care providers has announced a new partnership that could affect a portion of its workers. Good afternoon, I'm Susan Farley. There are new details about a car crash that badly damaged a house in Abbott Wednesday evening. The driver could be facing charges. And the city of Belfast is expecting costly repairs after that late December storm that devastated the coast. Thank you for joining us. We'll have more on these and other stories in just a moment. First, let's check in with meteorologist Devin Biggs. Devin? Hey Susan, TGIF, your first weather forecast brought to you by Luigi and Fredericks across from Eastern Maine Medical Center, serving the greater Bangor area for over 65 years. Here we go. So we did have some fog developing for a while this morning, maybe mixing in with a little bit of snow in some spots. We'll be watching for more snow that will be moving in this afternoon as so we'll be watching for some more, uh, our next wave of energy that will be moving in. We do have a small crowd advisory that will be dropped this afternoon as the winds are starting to calm down. We do see, though, this is a newly issued, uh, not too long ago, winter weather advisory that will last for these areas here until about 8 p.m. later this evening. But here's the Radar and Sally showing that we're, we're calming down for now. Maybe a few flurries falling underneath the radar, but we're watching all this right here as moving in from the southwest going toward the north and east. Now gives more snow on the way just in time for the afternoon period. Maybe about an inch or less before we're all finished up with all of that. But here we go, though. All this moving in from the southwest going toward the north and east. So by later on time tomorrow, this will start to calm down. Maybe a, a couple more waves of snow we might have to watch out for. Very slight chances, I will stress. So this will be the last noticeable chance for a while. So moving forward, though, the winds not not too bad, remaining rather calm for the next several hours and even the next day or so, at least until late Saturday before it looks like things start to stack up just a little bit yet again. So a future cast showing that snow they'll be moving forward at least from time to time today. Nothing too extreme but overall holding on to the clouds at least two parts of Saturday morning. For today, lower 30s to the about an inch or less possible. North wind at about five miles per hour. Our only forecast for the rest of the afternoon period. Cloudy skies, snow showers beginning by around 2 to 3 o'clock in the afternoon. Your full five-day forecast is coming up. Susan? Thank you, Devin. One of the state's largest health care providers has announced a new partnership that could affect a portion of its workers. Devin Dagnall met with the president and CEO to discuss what changes are coming. Northern Light Health announced that they will begin a strategic relationship with Optum. Tim Dentry, the president and CEO of Northern Light Health, says that he hopes the partnership will help streamline a lot of the services the healthcare provider has struggled with in the past. Dentry says the partnership will improve things like information systems, supply chains, and the digital experience for patients. I'm very positive and upbeat about this because I think it's, it's, good, it's, it's good for our staff. And it's especially good for our direct caregivers. According to Dentry, the new relationship will only affect about 10% of the active staff across the whole of Northern Light Health. This is for very specific um, operations, and again, they're, they're support services. So it's not direct patient care in any way, shape, or form. This is really supply chain. It is the rev cycle from the time you schedule an appointment through billing and all those kinds of headache things that are in healthcare. Dentry says that those affected by the partnership don't need to worry about any downsizing because their jobs are actually guaranteed under the first year of the contract. After that, he says there's still no cause for concern. Other health systems that have had this in place for three, four years, they've actually added staff. Their uh, turnover rate is less than half of what ours is right now in the state. There's, there's no guarantees beyond a year, but we think the track record is such that it's going to be a very uh, positive thing for all of their careers. Dentry says it will take some time before Optum is fully integrated, and he expects the process to be more or less completed by the end of March. In Brewer for ABC7 and Fox 22, I'm Devin Dagnalt. There are new details about a crash that badly damaged a home and may lead to charges. The Piscataquis County Sheriff's Office says they have identified the driver of that vehicle that crashed into a home at 6 Main Street in Abbott Wednesday evening. The Sheriff's Office says the operator was a 16-year-old girl from Guilford who claimed that she had swerved to avoid a deer when she hit the home. Construction crews were at the scene of the incident Thursday starting to make repairs. According to the Sheriff's Office Facebook page, deputies responded to what they called a hit-and-run incident along the main road at 4.40 p.m. Wednesday, in which a vehicle appeared to be traveling at a high rate of speed before crashing. Nobody was there at the time. Officers are still investigating, but say charges may be coming. 
a somber record for 2022, Maine finished the year with 179 fatal fatalities, the most in 15 years. Officials with the Maine Bureau of Highway Safety are spreading awareness in hopes of making Maine roads safer. Highway Safety Coordinator Nicholas Brown says they've seen some disturbing trends since the onset of the pandemic. It just seems like once the pandemic hit, people started reverting back to doing more reckless endangerment when it comes to driving and whatnot and making, you know, the wrong choices when they get behind the wheel. It's safety first. You know, you want to put your phone away. You have to make sure you have no impairment whatsoever. Brown says their ultimate goal is to have zero highway fatalities. He says that makes everyone doing their part by always remembering to wear your seatbelt and to always drive sober and without distractions. Waterfront businesses in Bar Harbor have filed an injunction as part of their federal lawsuit against the new daily limit on cruise ship passengers allowed into town. In November, Bar Harbor voters approved a limit of 1,000 incoming passengers per day to the popular tourist destination. The lawsuit states 2,000 to 4,500 passengers normally disembark daily during the cruise ship season. Fish Main Restaurant Group co-owner Krista Bond says the limit would be devastating to businesses that rely on the town's strong tourism industry. We'll start with, we'll probably have to close earlier and open later. We'll probably have to employ less people. Um, you know, the list goes on. If I'm employing less people, there's less people in town spending money. You know, I, I mean, the trickle down is real. Bond says the businesses have filed for an injunction with the hopes of putting these new rules on hold while the lawsuit plays out. The purpose of that is to uh, keep everything the status quo while the judge is going through and trying to determine his decision um, so that hopefully the cruise ships next year can stay as they are scheduled. Uh, we're because... hopeful that the judge will understand that um, it's going to cause immediate irreparable harm if all these ships don't come next summer. Bond says the business owners were shocked and disheartened by the vote by Bar Harbor residents who say they're fed up with congestion during the busy summer months. As of now, the judge has yet to make a decision on the motion for injunction. The city of Belfast is expecting costly repairs after that late December storm that devastated the coast. David Ledford has the story. It was a big storm. We've seen them before. We'll see them again, uh, but we'll make do. Belfast is still dealing with the fallout from a storm in late December that brought a different kind of winter weather. According to city officials, the cost to repair city-owned property, including docks and boathouses, and clear debris from the powerful storm that hit on December 23rd, could cost as much as $120,000. Belfast Fire Chief Patrick Richards says the significance of the damage is due to the city's proximity to the ocean and a lack of ineffective coastal defense. We sustained some very heavy winds, high winds, uh, a lot of uh, impact from the ocean, uh, the sea level rise. Anything that comes from the ocean, we, we suffer uh, quite a significant uh, impact. There is just no protection there. While a large portion of this debris was cleared before the start of the new year, many docks are still stacked up on nearby land, waiting to be repaired. Richards says this has impacted the fishing and boating community the most, but does not expect summer tourism to be affected. Belfast Mayor Eric Sanders says that the city has seen similar storm damage in the past, and that the town is planning to rebuild the current breakwater, which is meant to reduce the power of incoming waves before they reach the shore. Sanders says that rebuilding the breakwater to be both taller and longer could cost an estimated $11 million. It's going to cost money, but it's, it's needed. In 87, people said they were crazy to build it, they'd never need it. And I was down there that morning on the 23rd, and you couldn't even see it. In Belfast, David Ledford, ABC7 and Fox 22. Coming up on ABC 7 News at noon, 10 rural libraries across the state of Maine have received funding in order to make telehealth appointments more accessible. We've got the details when we return. With AAA insurance, by bundling our home and auto policies, we saved over $450. And we were shocked at the savings. When we switched to AAA auto insurance and bundled our policies, we were able to save over $400 every year. Switch to AAA insurance today and you could save an average of $483 on auto insurance. Compare that to State Farm, GEICO, even Allstate. 
Call now for your free AAA full pitcher quote to find out how much you could save. Well, my passion is hang gliding. I've been doing it for over 30 years, and it's like flying. I mean, it's like everything you always dreamed about. AAA insurance helps us save more. And do more. The savings from AAA insurance has allowed me to pursue my passion of making jewelry. It's great to have a little bit of extra cash to do something that you love. To find out how much you could save by switching to AAA Insurance, call 866-460-1310 for your free AAA full picture quote today. You'll be glad you did. For the best selection in classic and contemporary furnishings, stop by Richard Parks Furniture on High Street in Ellsworth. Handcrafted New England made bedrooms and dining rooms, imported Scandinavian recliners and upholstery, more than 40 lines of furniture for the home and patio. Richard Parks Furniture is your number one stop for quality, functionality, and well-designed furniture at affordable prices. Richard Parks Furniture. Discover Richard Parks. 132 High Street in Ellsworth. Discover Richard Parks. When the Granite Shop wants to know the weather on MDI, they log on to FoxBangor.com. At the Granite Shop in Sedgwick and in Trenton, we have more inventory than all other shops in the state combined. Fastest turnaround, too. Whenever Maine Wood Floors wants to know the weather, they log on to FoxBangor.com. Whether you're searching to add beauty with a new hardwood floor or need to restore your old one, Maine Wood Floors is your hardwood flooring expert in Midcoast, Maine. Hey, it's Eric from Green Bear 420. We've been in business since 2010 and going strong, so stop in and check us out. We specialize in glass art by over 100 local artists and even have live glass blowing. Plus, we carry incense, novelties, t-shirts, and hard-to-find items. We have tons of local products for the tie-dye-wearing person in your circle of friends. Come see us at 531 Moosehead Trail in Newport. And remember, Green Bear 420, it's not just a store, it's a lifestyle. You're watching ABC7 Bangor. Tens of thousands of Mainers are about to get $450 sent to their bank accounts. It's part of that emergency heating relief plan just signed into law. And as Asia Reed shows us, a lot of people are saying they're looking forward to the extra help. Eligible Mainers will receive $450 as a part of the emergency heating relief plan, which the governor signed Wednesday, right before her inauguration. I think it's too bad that it got delayed into January, but I'm glad that the legislature was able to come together and actually help the Maine people get through this hard winter. The plan is to help eligible Mainers with $40 million going towards home heating assistance and $10 million in emergency fuel assistance. I believe that families are struggling and the ones that are struggling need heat. It's necessary for a lot of people, but a lot of people it isn't. Not everyone is on board with the idea. Not unless they deserve it. If you're on Social Security and that's all you got, and uh, basically, but people with uh, making uh, $100,000, $200,000, $80,000, $80, take care of yourself. Single filing Mainers who make under $100,000 a year could receive $450, $900 for those filing jointly and making less than $200,000 a year. I think $450 is a good start. I think some folks will always need more. I mean, it's better than nothing. It's uh, that's about half a tank for most little houses these days. It helps. I think perhaps $450 isn't going to go very far this time. $450 would probably buy half a tank of oil, I think and it would help. I just wonder where the money is coming from. The state says funding comes from surplus money. Governor Mills says about 880,000 residents will get the money. The state says Mainers could receive a check in their mailbox as soon as mid-January. The city of Bangor has installed two new electric vehicle charging stations, which are available for public use. The stations are located across the street from the Bangor Public Library and inside of Pickering Square Parking Garage. Bangor has been working on installing these charging stations since receiving funding from the state's Community Action Grant Program. The new additions bring the total number of city-provided stations to four, each having the ability to charge two cars at the same time. 
Ten rural libraries across the state of Maine have received funding in order to make telehealth appointments more accessible. It's all part of the Maine State Library Health Connect program. That program is supported by funding awarded by the Maine State Library as part of the American Rescue Plan Act. Under the program, selected libraries will offer telehealth appointments free of charge. Residents can set up online, face-to-face appointments that are held inside of a soundproof private room at the designated library of choice. The Alice L. Pendleton Library in Islesboro, Cary Library in Holton, Pittsfield Public Library and the Skowhegan Free Public Library are just a few of these libraries picked for the program. It's a great savings. With gas prices almost $4 a gallon here now, um, it saves a lot of money for the patients and a lot of of time and and gives them peace of mind that they don't have to travel in the wintertime. Wellington says telehealth patients just need to bring their Zoom ID with them to the library in order to join their appointments in the new spaces. After the break, we'll take a look at a deal that could be in the works to end the speaker grid lock in Washington. We'll be right back. Attention Medicare beneficiaries. Have both Medicare and Medicaid? Now's the time to explore your options and choose the coverage that's right for you. Choose a plan that offers you more benefits at no additional cost. Millions of members turn to WellCare for benefits and services that go beyond basic Medicare and help them lead better, healthier lives. Choose a plan with zero or low monthly premiums, co-pays, and deductibles. And with WellCare, you don't just pay less, you get more. More dental with comprehensive coverage, including dentures and crowns. More vision and hearing with an eyewear allowance and hearing aids. Plus prescription drug coverage with $0 preferred generics and free home delivery. Call us at 1-877-267-8416 to speak to a friendly licensed representative and request a free all-in-one guide. There's no obligation. We're here to help you review your options to see if a WellCare plan is the right decision for you. WellCare has a large network of quality doctors and specialists. Plus, we offer PPOD SNPs with the freedom and flexibility to choose your preferred provider in some areas. Enjoy free over-the-counter health care items and free groceries with a healthy food card. Plus, free transportation to doctors and pharmacies and free meals delivered to your home. Get convenient access to care with our telehealth services, including online doctor visits and a free gym membership with online classes. WellCare is a leader in government-sponsored health care. It has been serving those with Medicare, Medicaid, and prescription drugs for more than 35 years. Call now. We're here to answer your questions and even assist in rolling you over the phone. Choose the company that puts your health first. WellCare, Medicare done well. Call now and get a free copy of our all-in-one guide. 1-877-267-8416. Jamar Construction Products in Bangor continues to grow to meet our customers' needs. Supplying products for site work contractors, concrete contractors, and survey and safety supplies. We are proud to be the local dealer for Hilti, Valley Blades, U.S. Fabrics, and Euclid Chemical, plus so much more. Stop by and see us at 1270 Hammond Street or give us a call at 907-4491. If you dig it, pour it, plow it, fasten it, lay it, or lift it, Jamar Construction Products can help you. A deal may finally be in the works to end a grueling standoff in Congress after five failed votes just yesterday. House Speaker hopeful Kevin McCarthy spent the night trying to win over conservative holdouts. But will it work? Douglas Otter has more from Capitol Hill. We are about to see a 12th vote for House Speaker here, something that hasn't happened since 1859. After losing his 11th vote to become Speaker of the House, Kevin McCarthy was swarmed by reporters. It's not how you start, it's how you finish. And if we finish well, will be very successful. But that's a big if. A speaker has not been elected. McCarthy has heard that over and over again, but he and his supporters hope today may be different. I want us to come together as Republicans. We can still be a team here. McCarthy has made concessions to his critics, offering to make it easier for members to remove him if they're unhappy. And he's offered deals on committee assignments, among other things. 
and that may be enough to win some support. We have to take this opportunity to make the changes necessary to make Congress work for the American people. But there are a handful of Republicans who say they cannot be persuaded, including Florida's Matt Gates, who excoriated McCarthy for already moving into the Speaker's office before he has the job. And I would like to know what the basis is to allow somebody to occupy the Speaker's office who comes in second place 10 straight times. Is there like some basis in law or rule or precedent for that? Now, the last time this process played out this long, back in 1859, there were ultimately 44 votes before a speaker was finally elected. Facebook's parent company Meta has been fined millions by the European Union for privacy violations. EU regulators fined the company $414 million for breaches of the general data protection regulation relating to both Facebook and Instagram. Regulators also ruled that the company cannot force users in the block to agree to personalized ads on their platforms. Meta said they plan to appeal the fines and the ruling. 2023 is expected to bring about big changes to marijuana laws throughout the U.S. Madeline Rivera has more on where marijuana could soon be legalized. The start of 2023 kicked off more than a new year, with the beginning of some major changes to marijuana laws across the country. Next week, the state of Connecticut is set to launch its first legal sales of adult-use marijuana. And by July, the state of Maryland will follow suit legalizing non-medical cannabis. It's been a very, very, very challenging journey to get to this point. Uh, every step of the way, there's criticism. In Detroit, the city recently awarded its first 33 marijuana retail licenses after voters overwhelmingly approved recreational sales last year. And in New York, the city's first legal dispensary for recreational marijuana has now been open just one week. This is so critically important because it's not about whether you're going to use it or not. It's about whether people who want to can do so without facing a criminal record. But across the country, debate continues over whether marijuana should be legalized for all 50 states. Marijuana and drugs are crippling. They cause addiction, they cause crime, and they cause mental issues. But by the end of 2023, more states could be opening their doors to cannabis sales. Oklahoma votes on the issue in March, and the Ohio state legislature is already considering a bill to legalize the use and sale of recreational weed. But while more states are getting on board with legalizing marijuana, a new study published this week shows more young children are getting sick from it, with calls to poison control centers rising from kids accidentally eating marijuana edibles. It's a new year and doctors at the Cleveland Clinic say it could be a good time to ensure you're making health a priority. Doctors say you can consider checking your cholesterol through blood tests to make sure you're healthy. The results will let you know if you need to make any changes to your lifestyle to avoid heart attack or stroke. Also, make sure you're staying on top of cancer screenings. Many people should start getting colonoscopies at age 45. Losing weight, eating better and quitting smoking are also great ways people can improve their health in the new year. When we return, Devin Biggs has your five-day forecast. Saliba's Rug Cleaners in Bangor is the best and only spot you should go to for your rug cleanings. Serving Maine for more than 70 years, we care about your rugs. Clean rugs last longer, and our family takes pride in being the professionals that you can trust. Our cleaning process consists of soaking your rug in a bath, shampooing, rinsing, and drying in a humidity-controlled dry room, making sure no detail is overlooked. Need a repair? We fully service every type of rug for you. Saliba's Rug Cleaners. We care about your rugs. With AAA insurance, by bundling our home and auto policies, we saved over $450. And we were shocked at the savings. When we switched to AAA auto insurance and bundled our policies, we were able to save over $400 every year. Switch to AAA insurance today, and you could save an average of $483 on auto insurance. 
Compare that to State Farm, Geico, even Allstate. Call now for your free AAA full picture quote to find out how much you could save. Well, my passion is hang gliding. I've been doing it for over 30 years, and it's like flying. I mean, it's like everything you always dreamed about. AAA insurance helps us save more. And do more. The savings from AAA insurance has allowed me to pursue my passion of making jewelry. It's great to have a little bit of extra cash to do something that you love. To find out how much you could save by switching to AAA Insurance, call 866-460-1310 for your free AAA full picture quote today. You'll be glad you did. Experts are saying there is a once-in-a-lifetime event happening right over our heads. It was discovered that the Comet C-2022-E3 will be visible for the first time in 50,000 years. It is expected the comet might get to uh, visible to the unaided eye, but we'll have to wait and see. Comets are notoriously hard to predict their brightness. Uh, it really depends on the amount of material that's melted off as it passes by the sun and the interaction uh, with the solar wind uh, will sort of push on that, creating the comet's tail. Sean Leach, the director of Versant Power Astronomy Center, says that for the best results while trying to see the comet, use binoculars on a dark night. He also says to use a star chart to make locating the comet easier. And have you seen this video yet? A Florida teacher showing off her dance moves. The video shows a student dancing, and moments later, the teacher steps in and shows off her moves as the students cheer her on. The dancing challenge happened last month during an exam break at Sumner High Academy 2027. The teacher, Yolanda Turner, tells Fox 13 in Tampa that this kind of movement moment with her students is what being an educator is all about. Well, he's not dancing, but he does have your full forecast. Let's check in with Devin Biggs. Devin? All righty, here we go. We do have some fog that developed for a while this morning, and even was maybe some snow flurries missing in for a few areas. But here's a general idea. Small cat advisory is going to be dropped very soon. But we're also watching this winter weather advisory issued further off for the south and west here for these areas, lasting until about 8 o'clock later this evening. Nothing in effect for us as any snow that falls won't be too extreme, about an inch or less will be the general idea. It's starting to move it now from the west going toward the east. So during the afternoon period, about 2 to 3 o'clock, we'll start seeing that fall as it does begin to develop and move on in. So here's a bigger picture, though. So we're seeing all this right here that's dragging off towards the east and a little bit of the north and east. So once we get this through, maybe we have another, another weaker wave as we head towards your Saturday before things start to calm down later on. So here's a bigger picture, though, as we plot all the fronts. This is from that area of low pressure located right about in here. So on top of that, we have this system here, all this tracking off towards the east. So we have today a little bit of tomorrow, but things start to calm down, especially as we head towards your Sunday. Future cast moving forward, though, snow moving in during the afternoon period, starting to calm down for the most part later on tonight. But we're going to hold on to the clouds and maybe some flurries further off towards the north as we get things going for your Saturday. So I'm so trying to sink down towards the south as we head towards Saturday evening, but mainly for our eastern county. So further off towards the west, the clouds will start to break up. And then look at this as we start things off for you Sunday. This is a nice picture with a lot of sunshine that will be on the way. Any snowfall on the way? Nothing too ridiculous. This is a big pullback, though, in the forecast. So maybe a little too extreme. So the general idea, I think, I'd safe to say is about an inch or less. And I definitely stress the or less. This is the latest forecast guidance that just came in during our show here. So we're going to be watching for maybe lesser snowfall totals moving through. So we'll at least get to look forward to that. Maybe an inch in some areas but definitely less in some other spots as well. But temperatures have been warm recently as well. We've had temperatures that have been in the 50s and 40s, which is well above normal for this time of the year. Average high being 29 degrees. We'll reach for the lower 30s today, upper 30s for your Saturday, upper 20s for your Sunday, then back in the 30s again Monday into Tuesday, cooling off again as we head towards Wednesday and also into your Thursday. So for today, lower 30s on the way, snow showers, lesser chances for around an inch, but some areas still cannot be ruled out. So half inch to an inch or less before we're all finished up in our north wind at about five miles per hour. Tonight, 23 degrees. Snow showers early, then becoming mostly cloudy with the wind overall looking nice and calm. And for tomorrow, upper 30s, mostly cloudy, slight chance for snow, especially in our eastern counties later on. West wind at about five miles per hour. Here's a look at your extended forecast. So here we go. So mostly sunny on Sunday. High is in the upper 20s. That will feel nice, right? Partly cloudy and even warmer as we see temperatures in the upper 30s. So maybe a little bit cooler on Sunday. Not too bad, but warming back up Monday. And even warmer again uh, still on Tuesday. Snow showers on the way and temperatures in the upper 30s.
Did you know that an alpaca item is the most wish-listed gift idea? Stop searching for that perfect gift and start shopping for it at the Blue Alpaca in Belfast. It doesn't matter who's on your gift list, the Blue Alpaca has something for everyone with an incredible selection of alpaca socks, hats, sweaters, even stuffed animals and more. Shop in-store or online and take advantage of their free nationwide shipping. Too much to choose from? Don't worry, the Blue Alpaca also offers gift cards. The Blue Alpaca, feel the difference. You're watching ABC7 Bank.